Then the third is Dhamma. Dhamma is self-control. Purity. Dhamma is purity. Now it is very difficult to define purity. But simple definition of purity is absence of mixtures. There are many states of consciousness in which you will find too many mixtures. Your mind is clouded by desire, that is a mixture. The thought is clouded by desire, that is a mixture. Thought and, and, and desire, the two are mixed together. If the two are separated from each other, thought becomes clear. If desire is, is freed, you will see desire clearly that, oh, this is desire, otherwise you will give a lot of coating to the desires. When a child says, oh, I like to see television, why? I get lot of information out of it. I get lot of knowledge out of it. He does not confess to you that he gets lot of excitement also out of it. And that he sees television not because he gets lot of information primarily, but because lot, there is lot of excitement in it. Getting information is a part of thought. Getting excitement is a part of desire. And the two are mixed together, so there is a mixture. So if your mind becomes pure, it is free from mixtures. So that is another condition of your dharma. Asteyam means non-stealing. Human beings are constantly in search of things. And whenever they find something, they want to put into their pocket. That is called steyam, that is called the state of theft. These things in the world, they don't belong to us. Nothing belongs to us in the world. This whole vast world, these pebbles are here, whether I exist or not, they will be there. They don't belong to me. But when I see and like them, I put them into my pocket and they say, they are mine. And then I quarrel with others. If they are mine, you cannot take them. This is a dharma. Dharma is, everything belongs to the whole world. And even if I take it, it is not mine. I take it for a small use if I want, but nothing more than that. In fact, Sri Krishna says, whoever takes without offering is a thief. In the Bhagavad Gita, this is a very great definition as given of theft. Whoever takes without offering is a thief. So now you understand the meaning of theft. As long as you take but do not give back anything, do not offer, you realize that you are in a state of adharma. The state of dharma is that when you take and you offer, you should be in the state of offering. And then Sri Krishna says even further, after offering something is left, that is all that you should use. Go on offering what is just left. Uchishtam, that which is left, is, is, is to be used by you. But even while using, you again offer. In other words, life should be a constant offering. That's why in Auroville Charter, you know Mother has given, you should be willing servitors of Divine Consciousness. Willingly, servitor means offering. Servant, to be a servant means you offer yourself. A servant is always in a state of offering. So, if you are a constant servitor of Divine Consciousness, you can never be a thief. You have achieved asteyam. You are already in the state of non-stealing. In fact, your mother wants that all of it constantly be in a state of non-stealing. And that is dharma. Then, shaucham. 
शौचम इज वॉट क्लीनलीनेस There should be a physical cleanliness. There should be vital cleanliness, mental cleanliness, psychic cleanliness, spiritual cleanliness. In all manners, we should be clean, transparent. So this is when you are not transparent, it is a dharma. When you become transparent, that is dharma. Indriya nigraha. This is one of the most important things to be remembered. Control of senses. There is a great Upanishad called Katho Upanishad. One day I would like you to learn Upanishads. I am giving a long program of studies. Learning of Sanskrit, learning of Bhagavad Gita, learning of the Veda, learning of Katho Upanishad. But this is a lifelong program, not that necessarily you should, within 20 years you should do. It doesn't matter. It's a lifelong program. So we shall learn many, many things. But one day you will learn Kathopanishad, in which it is said that our body is so constituted that all our senses, senses means eyes, ears, nose, mouth, tongue, everything, our skin naturally opens outward. Your eyes are closed. The moment you open, you see the outer world. Your ears hear something that is coming from outside. Your tongue tastes only when something from outside comes and you have taste. Every sense that you have opens outwards. And most of the difficulties of the world arise because once you open outward, you run outwards. They are like horses. Our senses are like horses. And horses want to run. Similarly, our senses, the moment they are open outside, they simply want to run. You eat ice cream, one cup, and you want to eat another cup of ice cream. The senses immediately demand more and more and more. They are like wild horses. But reality of which he spoke, Satyam, the reality, is inward, is not outward. Outward is only an external expression of the internal. So if you want to see internal, how will you see internal? So the answer that is given is Indriya Nigraha. Your senses should be controlled. They are like horses. Not that you should stop them running. Allow them to run, but under control. You should be able to say no whenever you want. One ice cream cup is all right. But you should be able to say now no more. That is called nigraha. That is this control of senses. You should not be slave of senses. You should be the master of, 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 of the senses. So, the moment you are able to control the senses, you understand that you are moving towards dharma.